Well, this has been a long time in the waiting. Shannon Hoyt, you might see her on TikTok. You might see her on Instagram. Now you see her on Alex Garrett Podcasting. First of all, Shannon, thanks for joining us. Oh, so glad to be here. You are username Hoyt on air, and we just started connecting on TikTok and Instagram. But you are a local uh, anchor at WQ. It's a little confusing. Tell me the, the actual letters that you're on, on right now. Yeah, so WQOW, it's out of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We cover pretty much the entire western region of Wisconsin. Um, small market, but uh, local news, and I love what I'm doing. Now, if those who follow you may not be aware, you're a tri-stater at heart, aren't you? I am, yes. I was born in Connecticut, and my whole half of my mom's side of the family lives there. Um, my parents met in Connecticut, and I was born there. And we go back there to visit all the time. Love seeing the East Coast. And, but, you know, I grew up in much, uh, much of my life in Wisconsin. So, it, you know, I love the East Coast, but I'm also a Wisconsinite. <laughs> so what I love about your journey is kind of similar because I started as an intern in radio, moved my way up to producer. You did the, sort of the same thing. And then you ended up landing an anchor job. So tell us your story. Right. Yeah. I started as an intern. I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went to college. I went to UW Stout, which is actually only 25 minutes away from WQOW. And okay. I had no idea that there was even a station nearby. I had never really, you know, young, younger generations, it almost seems like don't really watch the news as often or don't even think about it. They usually get it, you know, from social media. So my mind wasn't really looking for TV broadcasting. But in college, I joined a few organizations that kind of had to do with the whole on-camera performance um, skill and aspect. So I joined those organizations, fell in love, and opened my eyes to find any local internship that had anything to do with it. And I found WQOW. So I interned there for about 10 weeks got a call back about a month and a half after my internship saying, Hey, we need you. Can you continue working weekends? So I said, it's like an extended Absolutely. internship. So I took it. Uh, after that, things just kind of fell into place. I, that was my, during my senior year of college. So once I graduated, got a full-time reporter job. And a few months after that, uh, weekend anchor, a few months after that daybreak anchor, and then a few months after that uh, evening anchor. So <laughs> Well, what I love about you, Shannon, is that you don't carry yourself as like this big TV personality. Like you're a very, you got a small town heart, you know? So I think that that probably makes this a little more enjoyable that you don't have this ego thing. You just love being on the air, right? Oh, I do. I, I love local news too. A lot of, uh, some people said, you know, where do you want to go from here? But local news, you make such a big difference. I mean, people trust their local news more. They turn to their mm -hmm. local news. You're affecting the area that you're living in. And I grew up in Western Wisconsin, so I know the area and I think that we're making a huge impact. Well, I want to talk about that impact because you guys are in Claire, Wisconsin, but you're growing a following on TikTok and Instagram. So tell us about how that's helped the station's presence, helped your presence as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, when they look at news, uh, look at news anchors, they see more of that professional, very, you know, mm -hmm. I just need to deliver the news and that is that, but there's also a personality behind mm -hmm. anchors and TikTok. When that app came out, I was, I remember saying, no, I can't be yep. on that. I, I'm too old. That's for the younger generations. And one day I was like, let's try it out. And I remember I did a TikTok of me at our station and it got a couple hundred likes. And I was like, this is this is kind of cool. People get to see the behind mm -hmm. the scenes. So yeah. I started making more and more news TikToks and people got to see my personality. I got to be funny. I got to show a side. You got to be Shannon, stuff. right? Right, exactly. I mean, I love being you know funny. I like make, making people smile and laugh. Mm -hmm. And you can't, there's not a lot of time to do that on the news. There's, you know, sure. we joke around, but... A lot of the times, there's not enough time to really show off your personality. Okay, well, I've noticed some other anchors and, and other personalities on TV, they sort of get in trouble for doing a trend, you know, on actual live television. So have you run into that at all? Have you gotten requests, hey, can you do this on the air for us? We want to see what that would look like. Right. Well, there has, you know, 
you have to be careful. I mean, there's definitely, mm -hmm. you don't want to do anything that, you know, may, gives WQOW a bad name or News 18 or just news in sure. general. And, you know, you get the occasional people who maybe misinterpret something. Sure. It's kind of inevitable. Some people just misread situations. So yeah, I just, you know, I'm really careful. I'm tiptoeing sometimes. I got you. Well, it, it seems like you're a little more free flowing than tiptoeing. That's why I like it because you're like, you're yourself still, you know, and I, I think that's admirable. Um, but going back to a couple minutes ago, you said, you know, people our age didn't really know the news and really watch the news. So didn't that inspire you to get into the news? Because you're like, well, maybe our generation needs to have someone in the circle to tell them what's going on. I exactly that's something that I really you know I'm 25 I, I'm I'm pretty young for my position uh but I think that's a good thing my co-anchor uh he's older so we have this wide variety of age groups representing the news and being able to be relatable and I think the more and more I get into local news and, and seeing how much of an impact we make, the more I think it's important that younger generations turn the TV on and watch yeah. us for a half hour. And so I'm hoping that my age and my presence on social media even will get people who are younger to tune mm -hmm. in and watch us. Well, you know, Kashoga has happened earlier in the year and there's a lot of coverage in Wisconsin. Did you guys get any of that? trickle down like protests and all that or was how far are you guys away from that yeah yeah uh we did have some uh protests in eau claire uh, you know we're yeah again we're not too far away from minneapolis and where all of that happened so we you know we had an impact here in eau claire and and protests and events happening that had to do with that case mm -hmm. so you know big situations like that trickle down into the local news and we have to be there to cover it and yeah. put ourselves into the situation. So yeah, I think you mentioned we're a field reporter one time. Do you miss the field? Do you, do you ever still go out there? I do. I, I take on, I think a little too much <laughs> sometimes. Okay. You know, uh, I will volunteer to take on stories, even though I'm already so busy <laughs> and, you know, I feel like I'm never home because I'm always either out in the field covering a story or producing our 10 o'clock show. So I'm anchor, I anchor the five, six and 10. I produce the half hour show that is the 10 o'clock uh -huh. report. And then I also try to find time to get out in the field, interview people. And so, yeah, I never, never can lose that though. You know, you, you just cannot, never can lose that. Like we did the uh, hometown heroes parade in New York. And for my followers, let me go out in the field. You know, just there's something about the field reporting that never leaves us, I guess. Right, exactly. I, I love it. I love being out in the community and meeting people and talking to people. That's that's what's worthwhile. And that's the part that I really do miss about being full-time field reporter. But uh, it's good that you're still at that. Now, one other thing that I find interesting about WQOW is that you also have been able to do, when there's a fundraiser, you tell people about it on your own channel so I feel like that's helped the fundraising aspects when you guys do have those telethons and whatnot right yeah the um actually I'm wearing a shirt right now it's called we won't stop it's uh from St. Jude uh oh, children's wow. hospital or the yeah that hospital I actually um through the radio it was through iHeartRadio um that I actually went and was on the radio and promoting this, but also, you know, representing WQOW. So I get to go out and do those things and also, you know, post on social media, post even on TikTok, talking about how we were working on these fundraisers and we were being a part of the community. And that just expands our outreach for, for anything we're working on. Well, I've heard that you have a, 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 you know, a role in radio as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, so I actually have been on the radio a few times. Um, there was a couple times where we, we would cover major cases or major stories in Western Wisconsin. And then, you know, we would be invited a lot to sit on the radio and talk about our experience with those cases. I uh, also been on, you know, iHeartRadio, we've got a uh, Moose Country, we've got all these kind of uh, uh, stations in our area that I've been on to help with fundraisers, to help promote events. And Very of cool. course, you know, uh, some local radio hosts, we've got uh, a rock station. I'm always on, on there with my friend Scorch and we're talking about uh, some of the fundraising that he does. So I get my, I get my fair share of radio time. All right. You're in college. Did you ever think you'd be anchoring in television and then also this radio? And 
hard hitting question here. Do you like both equally? Do you like one over the other? Like what, what format do you like? You know, I do lean more towards television news um, only because I had this theater side to me and okay. I like that idea of performance uh, and personality and also just storytelling in general. So I do lean towards more television, but don't get me wrong. I love radio and I love um, goofing off with the guys uh, <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> and in college, I didn't, I had no idea I was going to be in television. It was one day I sat down and it was late into my college career. And I was like, what am I going to do? I don't know. And mm. this is just kind of fell into place. And I, I'm really fortunate that I am where I am right now. You just said performance. Did you ever do acting? Like, have you done theater before? Yeah, I was in theater in high school and college okay. and uh, did musicals and, uh, and theater in general. I did a kind of a bigger performance, which was one of my favorites, actually. One of my old professors from college, he wrote a play on his sabbatical and I got to uh, be one of the wow. lead roles in that and just like share, share in that where he created his own play and I got to be a part of it. It was really cool. Well, I didn't expect to go here, but here we are. Uh, do you have any friends on Broadway that were affected by this, uh, you know, COVID, this lockdown? Like, do you have anybody on Broadway that you know of? that was affected? I, I know of uh, one person on Broadway, his name's Kyle Scatliff. He was in The okay. Color Purple and uh, Hamilton. Um, I, I follow him and I met him um, years ago in Connecticut, actually. <laughs> uh, and he actually okay. gave us a tour in New York City one day. He just kind of brought us okay. around. And I've been following him and I haven't really seen much of a huge impact. Obviously, uh, you know, some of the shows being halted and things like yeah. that, it could definitely impact him, but he's been staying pretty positive by what I've, uh, from what I've seen. Well, I roll down there, you know, a lot in Times Square and to see the lights off for me as a kid who grew up in New York is just it's devastating because I, I have had connections in the theater too. And I just wanted to get back up and running. Uh, does your Claire do a lot of community theater too? Do you guys have a community theater outlet there? Oh yeah, we have a ton. I mean, Eau Claire is known for its arts community. We have, uh, you know, the children's theater. We've got the community theater. We've got, uh, you know, small side groups that do plays and things like that. So theater is definitely represented here in the Chippewa Valley. So I got to ask now, how do you bring your performative uh, talents onto the airwaves? Like, are you you must be very emotive and everything when you're doing these, these newscasts and whatnot. Yeah, it, it helps so much. Uh, articulation. I mean, when you're on a stage, you need to project and articulate, and that's huge in anchoring. Uh, you have to make sure your audience can understand you because that information is falling on ears of all mm -hmm. ages. And, um, so it, yeah, it's really important to not only present the information um, clearly, but also you need to have fun with it. A fun story, yeah. you need to smile, you need to laugh, <laughs> you need to joke around. And then for yeah. a serious story, I mean, you need to feel it. You need to, and it's not even so much acting, but acting has helped, is you need to feel it. How would you feel if you know something tragic happened to you and, and put yourself yeah. in that situation when you deliver the news? All right. Uh, would you 10 of 10 improve, you know, recommend improv for people to take? Because I feel like that's such a big course to take when you're breaking into media, radio, or television. Actually. Yeah, imp improv is, is perfect for something like that. I did a little bit of improv in high school, and cool. it helps so much. I mean, you're ad-libbing so much. You need to be able to think on your feet. You need to be able to change things at the last minute. Breaking news comes in. You need to be able yep. to comprehend everything that's going on and, and give information accurately. And the improv helps so much with that because it helps you think outside the box and it helps you think on your feet. Uh, how do you have the energy after 1030 when you're done all this work from five to 10? Oh, I don't know. I think maybe I, uh, I have a little bit too much caffeine to get me through the night. Sometimes I get home <laughs> and I'm restless, <laughs> uh -huh. but yeah, I, I, you know, I'm pretty exhausted by 1030 it's a tiring job. I think it's because of the deadlines. It's because mm -hmm. of the stress as well. And the deadlines and stress, you put those together. And by the end of the night, your brain is exhausted and you just want to go to sleep. Um, 
And also like the stress levels again, I mean, breaking news comes uh -huh. in, you got to handle things last minute. That also kind of adds to the exhaustion. I, I don't know how big, I don't know how big Eau Claire is, but if you're going out like, you know, after work and everything, do people recognize you? Like, are you, are you recognized on the streets of Eau Claire? Yeah, not as much as, you know, uh, anyone who's really a celebrity, but we're a local local news station and we have a, a local following. And so when you go out in the community, I've been noticed a few times, uh, people either wanted to get a picture with me or, you know, just saying, I love watching you. And it's so <laughs> amazing to hear that you're making that big of a difference in just mm -hmm. this small, close-knit community. So yeah, been been recognized a few times on the streets. As we're talking, I'm thinking of like movies like Bruce Almighty, the local television angle there. A any movies that you actually relate to, whether it be that, even network. I mean, network was kind of local there too. You know, the whole community there. Right, right. You know, <laughs> Bruce Almighty. That just that just brings me back. <laughs> I yep, love. Yep. But yeah, those movies. I mean, when you see these people in love with those local personality is the local exactly. anchor. Ron Burgundy was a local personality too. Exactly. I mean, those, it's true. I mean, people grow a following and they really trust you. I mean, they're, they're watching you in their living room every night. I mean, some people, and mm -hmm. so you become a part of their routine and a part of their lives, really. You mentioned the generational thing. Now, I, I don't even touch on this, but New York one had this lawsuit where they felt the older women were being pushed out for the younger generation. And, and so does Euclid does a good job balancing both, you know, the younger and, and, and sort of the older generations? I think so. I mean, we haven't been around as long as there's another competitor station in our market. So uh, WEAU, we haven't been around as long as them, but I think that's almost an advantage because we came in with this new look, new outlook on life. And I think we really do uh, relate to everyone of all ages. I mean, we're covering veterans events. We're covering, you know, protests for, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Black Lives Matter. I mean, we're a, we're a, pl uh, we're really relatable to, I think, a wide range. You're there. Yeah. Uh, women that want to break into this, this field, though, what's your advice for them? You know, being a woman, it, it is interesting being a, a female in news. A lot, I, I have gotten co uh, comments a lot about, you know, you only got your position because of your looks or, you know, things like that. They, they maybe not take you as seriously. Work hard, prove them wrong, you know, break those stories, get out in the community, dig deeper. Those are the things that you need to do to prove to people that you're not just Mm -hmm. there because of your face you're there because of your heart and you're there because mm -hmm. you want to work hard and you know just prove them wrong well back to my first point how hard did you work as an intern because i'm sure that was a lot of work to get to the the actual television and you know be on tv right and, and our internship is so unique because we actually get to do stories that air and some oh. internships are just shadowing a reporter but this one you are out in the field and you're doing your own uh work you know and re remind me what was the question again well just like as an intern how hard did they have you working and then oh. how did that help you prepare for being on as an anchor yeah yeah and and so i I used pretty much all my weekends. That was the only free time I had because I had other jobs and I had schooling because it was during uh, my senior year of college. So I was, I didn't have any weekends. I was working and schooling all week long. And then on the weekends, I was working this internship. So, mm -hmm. and I would stay there nine, 10 hours every day, learning everything that I could possibly do. I would stay late only because I really wanted to prove to them that I could work mm -hmm. really hard and, you know, even up my chances of getting a full time. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And by the way, I'm just thinking as you're, as you're doing all this work, I'm like, did you keep up with your running? Cause I know you're a runner, which I didn't know until I posted about running, but I didn't know you're a runner too. Yeah. I, you know, I did, I was able to keep up with it a few, you know, areas here and there where I might've taken a, a few weeks break, you know, you kind of uh -huh. got that but I was keeping up with it and I think I was even training for a half marathon during my internship 
and you know schooling and all that yeah. so I, I kept pretty busy I didn't have much <laughs> free time to just you know lay down and watch some Netflix <laughs> exactly and that's why you're on you're on the television instead of watching television right so there's that too hey I think the biggest question now in Wisconsin overall I mean Claire probably feels this too is I don't know if you're a sports fan or not, but I got to get the Pulse of Wisconsin. Do they think Aaron Rodgers is coming back? I got to know what the Pulse is out there. <laughs> I wish that you could talk to our uh, sports director about this because he would just go on and on with you about this conversation. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting how this is all playing out. And some people even think that maybe Aaron Rodgers just wants some more attention. And that's why this is all happening. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know. I think he will. I think he will. I, I think that this is just maybe it could be even a publicity stunt. I don't know, but it's, it's interesting to see how it'll play out, but I think he'll be back. I just know that green Bay is, you know, he gets everybody involved in Wisconsin, right? From you, Claire to Milwaukee, everywhere. I mean, it's just, yeah. they're there. Well, Shannon, this has been a real treat and please come back and uh, where can we follow you? Is it point underscore on underscore air on, on ball? platforms or yep you can find that on instagram you can find that on tiktok i started posting on tiktok again don't worry so okay. <laughs> goofy videos so that people can uh, have a laugh or a smile before work i love that and i'm sure that gets you going in the morning too just get that video done like now i can move on to the the, the, the television world you know right so exactly <laughs> it is a confidence booster believe it or not so shannon thanks so much and i've i've enjoyed getting to know you over the last few months already and let's stay in touch and Hey, when you hit New York again, let me know and we'll we'll definitely meet up. Yeah, that sounds great, Alex. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm Alex Garrett, where we're always adapting. Take care. <laughs>